Obi Mukabiala, um, uh, who um, uh, worked on a summer research project under the mentorship of Dr. Weiwei Li. Uh, they were working on the important topic of the electronic medical record um, and looking at an aspect of it um, that I think is quite fascinating, as you see up there, patients' perceptions of the electronic medical record. Pleasure to welcome Obi. Thank you, Dr. Siegler. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thanks for sticking with us here today. Um, the topic I'd like to talk to you about is electronic medical record. So, okay. Is the electronic medical record, specifically uh, the patient's view on the topic. Uh, in a couple of our talks here today, we've, we've kind of glossed over this. I know Dr. Angelos mentioned it a bit, but I'd like to, to delve a little bit deeper. So due to the drive for modernization, uh, EMR adoption and use has been increasing over the past five or six years, both in the United States and overseas. Additionally, and probably more importantly, the federal government has earmarked billions of dollars to help incentivize this transition, and as such, the EMR has established its role in patient care. Um, I'd like to start by sharing with you this picture. It's a picture of a drawing done by a seven-year-old girl that was, part of, that was published in an article in the, the Journal of the American Medical Association. Uh, this drawing depicts this girl's visit to her uh, doctor's office. Here on the right, you can see the girl, and on the left is uh, her doctor. What I'd like to ask you today, the same question we asked in our research is, should we find it concerning that her doctor's back is towards a patient and he seems to be paying little attention to her and her family? Uh, so previous work in this field has identified some troubling behaviors that can manifest in the face of the EMR in the clinical setting. Things like having your back towards the patient, things like poor eye contact, the list goes on. But little work has been done directly asking patients how they feel about the use of the EMR in their care. So that's what we aim to do. To first qualitatively understand what the patient perception of the use in, of EMR in their care is, and to two, elicit patient suggestions uh, to inform the development of a patient centered uh, EMR use curriculum. So, EMR use began at the University of Chicago Outpatient Clinics in May of 2012, and all patients seen in our project were seen approximately 15 months after that advent between August and October of 2013. Uh, this this uh, sample of patients represented a random sample of patients seen during that time. We conducted a series of telephone interviews uh, between December and August, uh, December 2013 and August 2014, and recorded and transcribed these interviews afterwards. Our project followed the grounded theory research technique, um, and in that we use appreciative inquiry and critical incident reporting techniques. Suffice it to say, these are established qualitative methods. Um, ways to phrase questions to elicit both positive and negative perceptions, respectively. In our case, to identify physician successes and deficiencies in the use of the EMR. Um, all these interviews were conducted by trained research assistants. Data analysis was done during using Atlas TI, which is a qualitative data analysis software, and an iterator reliability was established using the coding analysis toolkit. Just for fun, this is what the Atlas interface looks like. Uh, you can upload a patient interview transcript, which is this text on the left, you can highlight a section of that transcript and designate it as a pertinent qu uh, quote, which is what I've done in blue, and you can assign that quote um, a code which corresponds to a patient perception. And I know this is pretty elusive and you probably can't see this, so I'll take a few minutes uh, in, a, in a moment to walk through some specific examples. Um, but first, data analysis began when three investigators coded 10 transcripts together to generate a coding library. That is a catalog of all the things patients say about the use of the EMR in their care. An additional 10 transcripts were coded independently, and that was used to establish an iterator reliability. That's to say, is what one, uh, the perception that one investigator calls, is that congruent with another investigator? And this was demonstrated by an IR score of 0.63. Um, a total of 9,384 patients were eligible. Um, those were seen by 109 physicians. We took a, rand a random stratified sample by doctor and randomized 384 of those patients to the call list and interviewed 108 of those patients and analyzed their uh, transcripts. Upon going through the data, we noticed two overarching themes. That is, the things that patients are saying fit into two main families, the clinical functions of the EMR and the communication functions of the EMR. Within those major themes, there was a number of sub-themes that were identified as well. In the first family, things like documentation, clinical care, educational resource, and information access. And within the communication functions of the EMR, things like patient engagement and physical focus. Um, 
Now, because this is a qualitative study, the real meat, the data we were looking for, what are the things that patients are actually saying? So I'd like to take a few minutes to walk through some sample patient quotes and show you how we catalog those within this coding scheme. And I'll start here. I understood that he was actually making a record of information, things that I was sharing with him. This we coded as an efficiently recording of information, which was a documentation function of the EMR sub-theme, which fell into the clinical functions major theme. All right? Similarly, it is much easier for him or her to read everything. It's more difficult with handwritten notes. This was an increase in clinical efficiency, which fell into the clinical care domain under the clinical functions of the EMR. They can pull up information more easily than when they had the paper file. This was an ease of access of information, which fell under information access, which was also a clinical function of the EMR. And uh, these are all representants represent positive quotes, positive patient perceptions. And there's some, there were some negative perceptions as well, and I'll share some of those with you now. I understand better when, he, when she just focuses on talking to me. This patient viewed the EMR as a barrier to discussion and communication, which fell under the patient engagement sub-theme of the communication functions major theme. And finally, this guy couldn't keep his eyes off the computer. I think this patient thought that his doctor couldn't keep his eyes off the computer. <laughs> uh, this table here shows patient response frequencies organized by those major and uh, sub-themes that I just showed you. And I know it's a very busy slide, so I'd like to call, uh, call your attention to two main points here. First, that patient perceptions were really quite positive. Out of a total of 1,167 uh, perceptions identified, 991, or 85% of those, represented positive patient perceptions, all right? And most of those perceptions were fairly balanced uh, uh, amongst the code families. And secondly, that while only 176 of the 1,167 codes represented negative perceptions, 40% of those fell within the physical focus domain and an additional 26% fell within the patient engagement domain. So those are two points that I'd like you to keep in mind, and I'll come back to them in a second. But 85% were positive perceptions, um, only 15% were negative, and two-thirds of the negative perceptions fell within the communication functions of the EMR. All right? Uh, now, this study wasn't without limitations. It was a single institution study, so maybe these findings aren't, you know, uh, generalizable to every patient in every hospital. Um, as you can imagine, it can be difficult to get patients to talk to you over the phone, so we may have dealt with some non-response. And uh, we, as with any qualitative study, you need to consider the weight of each individual response because one patient saying a perception five times is given the same weight as five different patients saying the same thing once, if that makes sense. But back to those two points I just outlined. Patients hold positive and negative views of the EMR. The positive views, 85%, were mostly distributed evenly across the themes, and the negative views, 15%, were really focused on the communication and physical focus. And what we thought was really interesting was that these two things were not mutually exclusive. Take this quote, for example. The care is better, and the doctors are more polite, but the computer takes them away from focusing on you. This patient recognized that the EMR is a valuable clinical tool, and this patient recognized that it can, has the power to, to increase clinical efficiency and improve care, but maybe their doctor isn't paying as close of attention to them when they're using the EMR. Um, and this is a perfect segue into what our second aim was, and that's to, to use this, these perceptions to guide curricular development. Um, and to that end, that um, kind of leads me into some of our next steps and our implications. We wanted to incorporate patient perceptions uh, to develop an EMR use curriculum. We wanted to assess this, the, uh, the efficacy of this curriculum development um, by eliciting feedback after curriculum delivery. We wanted to directly observe providers using EMR to provide a formative feedback where necessary. And an uh, interesting next step is here at the University of Chicago and at the Cleveland Clinic, we have faculty training studies that will begin shortly. And also in the future, we want to kind of do the same thing but assess the use of iPads in patient care as well. Um, this is a pocket card demonstrating a mnemonic that we created, human level. And I know you probably can't see this, but I brought some of the cards with me here today. They're at the back. I think they're by the Coca-Cola. So grab one afterwards. And if you have any questions, please grab me. Um, before I finish, I'd just like to thank my uh, collaborators here. Thank um, the Pritzker Summer Research Project team. Um, obviously, thank the patients and providers for uh, working with us. Thank the Picker Institute, the Gold Foundation, the Buxbaum Institute. So with that, I'll leave you with this quote, and I'll take any questions. <laughs> yeah, that was something that a lot of patients echoed. Maybe not that directly, but you know, the EMR is, is a tool that we can use, but it's a tool, right? So it only can 
make what you're doing better or worse. It's not going to take the place of, you know, having a doctor interview you and talk to you and find out what's going on. It can only, you know, if the doctor's only paying attention to the computer, it's only a detriment. You know, it's not, it's not something that's going to make or break a patient relationship. Yeah, he asked if there's any correlation between um, the technical abilities of the doctor in, in using the computer and uh, the patient perception. Um, and I think, yeah, that's an important point. Dr. Angelos kind of brought that up a little bit. Uh, it, it, wasn't a, it was a perspective that patients shared with us. You know, um, If their doctor seemed to be you know, staring at the screen and just hunting and pecking, does that mean they're a bad doctor, or does that mean that they don't know how to use the computer as well? Um, and I don't... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it, it is something that patients brought up. It's not something that we directly looked at in our study, but it is an important, an important. Uh, um, I'll answer that in a couple parts. First, that was it was a, a perspective that patients shared with us. You know, um, interestingly, I had a patient that I called, and he was in the midst of uh, of a legal battle. Actually, he was in a car accident, and. Um, he was concerned that the information that I was going to get with him from the interview was somehow going to be used in his in his uh, settlement. Um, so I think that inherently there probably is a little bit of distrust, you know, when you're entering something into this computer and now everybody that's involved with your care can see it. Um, and I think it's important to address that when you're talking with patients um, because, because it, it, it does add this element of distrust. And that's something that we wanted to focus on, and it's here in, in, the, in the human level mnemonic, you know, explain what you're doing. You know, log off when you're done. It, explain that what you're entering in is just for you and it's for their other providers, but it's not, you know, necessarily something that's gonna come back to hurt them down the line. So I, don't, I hope I answered your question. Thank you for bringing these cards. Yeah, they're, they're back available here. Available by the cookies and folks. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.